Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for our time of prayer, worship, and the Word. Let me read from John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Lord, we thank You, Lord God, for the gift of Your Son. And because of that gift, Lord, our lives have changed. Our world has changed, Lord God. Continue to pray, Lord God that more lives will encounter you, more lives will experience your love, your great love, which was expressed, displayed, and established on the cross to your Son. We are forever grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us worship God right now. May your praises live in every word we speak And with every gift of breath we breathe you in All the works that you have done consume my heart Who in all the earth compares to who you are who in all the earth compares to who you are? A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift into your name. A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift up once again. All creation lift its voice, declare into the air. Oh, Lord. How great you are How great you are May your praises live in every word we speak And with every gift of breath we breathe you in All the works that you have done consume my heart. Oh, who in all the earth compares to who you are? Who in all the earth compares to who you are? A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift to your name. A thousand God, we lift it once again, and all creation lift its voice, declare to the end, oh Lord, how great you are, you You are 
Lord, we thank you, Lord God. We ask you that you would be with us. Open our eyes to the power of your love, to the truth of your love that was expressed for our sake, that our sins may be forgiven, that we may be reconciled with you, that the world will not be hopeless, but the world will experience your goodness and your greatness. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're looking at John chapter 3, verse 16, probably the most used, translated, memorized scripture in the whole Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. In October 13, 1992, a vice president, uh, presidential debate in the U.S. elections, Admiral James Stockdale started his opening remarks with the question, who am I and why am I here? They say this is probably the two most important questions one has to answer in life. Somebody, put, put, uh, somebody else put it another way. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you found, find out why. Mark Twain said that. Now let us look at the glimpse of the scripture uh, from the text that we read and answer and find answers. We read the most quoted, most translated, most known Bible verse in the world. We have read it many times, probably heard it many times, probably whispered a prayer or two of thanks for the love of God. But what does it really say about us? How does it answer the two questions we just postulated? Let's look at some significant pra uh, phrases in the text we read. And the first one, ob the obvious one, is God so loved. There's two contexts I want us to see in this statement. The first for this statement. The first is obviously Jesus' conversation with uh, Nicodemus, a Jewish teacher who came to Jesus in secret for fear of being seen with the controversial Jesus. Jesus just created enemies for what he did at the temple. Jesus is showing God's love. And the love of Jesus here specifically means chosen love or preferred love. This is very different from the world where the world thinks about falling in love. This is a love that was decided way before anybody of us could meet him. It's a chosen uh, preferred love, which brings us to the second context. The chosen love of God for man starts from the very beginning. The love of God is the reason for creation. The love of God is the reason for purpose. The love of God is the reason for His unfailing faithfulness. The love of God has been tested, mocked, abused. Yet this love of God has remained steadfast, abundant, and unconditional. This love will change you and show you who you really are. The whole world you and I are in, a, are in an impossible situation. Sin has to be paid for. And the only payment for sin is death forever. There is no way man can ever pay this debt. It is man's greatest impossibility. Even all the riches in the world and all the good, in the, uh, good works in the world taken together or combined can never pay for sin. Jesus, in a sense, was the only one rich enough to pay for sin. The payment for our sin was not expensive. It was priceless. But despite our history of rebellion, wickedness, and sin, God's chosen love did not change. And it does not change. God chose to pay the extreme price for our sin then that we could be reconciled with Him. So who are you? You are the priceless child of God. You're God's chosen and preferred love. Let me encourage you, don't sell yourself to any opportunity, any promise, or any position. In other words, friends, don't cheapen yourself. Nothing, no one can ever change your value because Jesus already set your value on that cross. And the value is priceless. Next phrase, 
should not perish. The word perish here is interesting. Many just conclude that this means salvation from hell or salvation from an eternity of suffering. It does mean to violently come to a complete end. It does mean about, it does mean getting saved from hell, but it goes beyond that. They also connected the word perish here to a place called Gehenna. Gehenna was a place of evil, a place of wickedness, a place of Baal worship or idol worship, a place of worship of false gods, a place of child and human sacrifices, and ty all types of wicked worship. Gehenna eventually became a garbage dump, a place of trash, a place of useless things, a place you get rid of. So what is God saying? God's love for you saved you, saved us from a wicked, garbage, and useless life. You have made mistakes, friends, but you are not a mistake. You may be living a useless life today, but you are not useless. You are destined to make a difference and a difference in this world. You may be unnoticed, hidden and even ignored by the world, but God surely made you significant. Your life will make a difference if you allow God to intervene in it. Next one, the phrase eternal life. This is the other context for a perishing life. God doesn't want you to perish because He wants to put His life in you. The word eternal life here doesn't mean, yes, it, it does connote a long time or maybe forever. But it goes beyond just living and not dying. It goes beyond just living forever. It talks about the life of God in you. Why are you here? Because God wants to put His life in you. There's a quality of life that God wants inside of you. There's a quality of life which involves peace, fullness, and completeness. God promises you an amazing life. God's will for you is to live this God life or His life inside of you. God's work in you is to get you there. You will be transformed. You will be adjusted. You will be disciplined. You will be equipped and you will be challenged. Why? Because God wants His life in you. Because God has given you eternal life and He's working out eternal life in you. Friends, there is an amazing life ahead of you. The next phrase is whoever believes in Him. Think about that. The life God wants to put in you, the life of purpose, that God is working out in you is for whoever believes. It's not for a chosen few. It's not for just the gifted or the talented. It's anybody and everybody who's willing to believe in Him. We have a blessed future in Christ. For all who are willing to believe, your future is going to be amazing. The question now is this. Will you believe? As we close, John chapter 3, verse 16, all over again. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Let us worship God again. You are holy strong and mighty everlasting God you are holy strong and mighty ever faithful God you
A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift into your name. A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift once again. All creation lift its voice, declare it till the end. Oh Lord, how great you are. Oh Lord, how great you are. Oh Lord, how great you are. Lord, we thank you for your life that you put in us, Lord God. Lord, this amazing life, this gracious life, this life of love, this merciful life, Lord, this life with power that you placed in us, changes us, transforms us, till Jesus can be seen in us. Thank you, Lord God, for this life. Now let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.